Hi, this is Salim Bharti, and in this special edition of Red Hat Summit, today we have with us Dr. Johan Teda, your Chief Architect of High Performance Data Driven Development Platform at DXC Technologies. So, first of all, Johan, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, before we start, is I, I want to understand number one, what does DXC Technologies do? And second is, uh, how do you work? together with BMW? So DXC is one of the global leading end-to-end -end service provider, and we were founded 2017 out of the merger of HPC Enterprise Services and CEC, the Computer Science Corporation. We have about 6,000 clients worldwide, more than 130,000 people. And um, so there we do obviously lots of different things, but here in particular for this Red Hat Summit. So we, um, we work together with our offerings called DXC Robotic Drive, which we founded some years ago, where we tried to help automotive companies to like to go over this disruption right now of the um, next step into autonomous driving. And um, so there we work together with yeah, different partners to provide a complete set yeah, of infrastructure and platforms for BMW. So if you look at this particular use case, uh, uh, that you're working with BMW, um, it's, it's, it's not uh, wrong to say that, you know, companies use a mix, you know, we live in a multi-cloud world, you know, they use public cloud, they use hybrid cloud, um, they run a lot of things on-prem, on bare metal. So tell me in this specific use case, uh, what is the importance of hybrid cloud environment while, you know, of course, a lot of workload do run on public cloud and wherever they feel appropriate. But in this, you know, some of the key points that where, you know, on-premise, bare metal, is, is, it makes more sense. So it's always the constraints and the, the requirements you have from the specific ADAS and AD use case. So it really depends if you have a lot of like on-site, um, like half in the loop stations, we need to do a lot of on-site processing. So a lot of data has to flow there. Like this is the case here, for instance. So there's a lot of data which has to flow in and out. And um, so this actually already gives you a big like bonus point for an on-prem, but we also have other clients actually where we have a different use case and the constraints are different. So that might, makes more sense to go in a public cloud. But um, it really depends really on the constraints and constraints of um, yeah, lots of data in and out, um, lots of like long living instances, then it really makes a difference what you actually choose. But both is actually a good use case. When you look at you know this kind of uh, environment or platform that you work with uh, or with BMW, uh, what are some of the I mean basically you know the what developers need is same, but what are some of the unique expectations you know because you're looking at a very data driven development platform there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the fun thing is. So the developers have two really complementary use cases. One, the first thing is they want it to work, right? I mean, this is very obvious. They want to do their job. They want to develop their functions. They want everything to work. But at the same time, they also want to get the latest and coolest tool on it, right? So they really want to have the stability of a platform where they can just pump in their data when, and then they train their algorithms. But at the same time, they also want the latest gadgets, the latest version of something. So we really have this different use cases that um, we're, we're playing with. And then, so what they actually want is they have a large amount of data be processed. So that the data which comes in is like petabytes of data per day. And this really has to be a, in a very stable fashion to be processed. That's a, I mean, huge amount of data. I have a couple of questions there. Number one is, <laughs> where is all the data coming from? Number one. Number two is, how do you process this data? Because you also need a lot of computing power for that. And third is, yeah, yeah, yeah. why do you compute it? <laughs> what happens to the data? What value you extract from it? It's actually, it's, it's an amazing story if you think of it. So the cars, so you have like testing cars which drive around and they have like different kinds of sensors. They have video sensors, they have radar sensors, they have leader sensors. They have like internal data which is um, created in the car, like the brake system and so on. Now of this data is recorded and is collected, and then this adds up as ter several terabytes an hour. So if you have several cars driving around, this easily gets more than 1.5 to 2 petabytes a day. This data then has to get into the platform, like efficiently, obviously, right? And um, then you need, need to store it, and then you need to like 
do the full shebang of data engineering on top of it. So what do you do? So you have to like, clean the data. Obviously, you don't want to keep all of the data. So if you would say record like a, like a sunny highway every day, it's like you have like lots of recording of this. But then you say like you want to have this like unique positions like Ireland overtaking in a construction site and then a child's running on the highway or whatsoever. Right? So unique scenarios is what you want to like extract. And then you need to make check for data quality, maybe that the sensor was dirty or um, for whatever reason. So you need a, a huge like data engineering step to go through, but through and that's really like the data engineering part of it. And then you have all of this data and then you use it in simulations, for instance, because you can't record all of the data you need for um, developing autonomous driving, but you need to simulate lots of it and then use the data driven fashion, use the data you've recorded also, you have to check the sensors, you like to reprocess the data. And you need like tons of data for this. This is why this enormous amount of data is, um, is yeah, recorded and tested. And then, so the main computing part is done on the threaded OpenShift cluster, which is it's also a huge thing if you think of it, like more than 100,000 cores just to process the data which is recorded. Now, you also mentioned simulations there. Uh, uh... I mean, whenever we see any of those, you know, these self-driven cars, we see, you know, all those screens here, they, they do simulate a lot of things there. But tell us, you know, what is the role of simulation is uh, in, in, in a typical data-driven environment uh, for autonomous driving and why do we need it? So you need it, like, in order to make sure that the car is really safe. And I think this is the top most, um, like, most important point that the, the car has to be safe, it has to drive around, and we don't want to like hit anyone or make an accident. So the car has to be safe. So what you try to do is you have to um, catch catch the corner cases. I think the easiest thing is driving a straight straight line, but the corner cases are the most important things to catch. And so then it's statistics. You can drive around and record like tons of different scenarios and hope that you catch all corner cases. That's one thing you can do. But you will never like manage because it's the, the billion mile challenge, right? So you have to drive around to say, okay, as you said, cleaning. So I can record all of this data I want, but still I don't have the child running from the left side, for instance, right? And so what you try to do is we try to simulate the rest which you can't um, which you can't produce. So so typically you would say, try to record like two million kilometers, and then you would try to sim simulate 200 million kilometers, right? because this is the amount of data you need to make sure that, that yeah, the car actually can handle all situations. This is like simulation is the, yeah, it's super important because imagine you have to drive all around and imagine you still, even with all the driving, you would never catch all cases that your car need to be safe in, in operating mode. Then you talk about data processing, we talk about simulation. So. When does DXC enter the picture? So whenever it comes to help to organize something in large amounts, so to to you know to take the data in to record the data to to make sure that the, the whole processing gets there, but also for automation, it's very simple to to run like small jobs, run one or two jobs on your farm, or it's like it's easy to like if you do if you go towards deep learning, if you have some deep learning jobs you want to run, it's very easy to go to your like desk, say workstation. You run a job, see, does it work, does it not work? Ah, somebody else is using the chief use right now, so I have to wait for later on. But then the, the point is how to scale it. It's, this is the, the point. Scaling all of these workloads and, and use the infrastructure which you have in an efficient manner, this is the real key to this issue. And this is where we come in. So because we, we help our clients to make sure to, to scale efficiently, to say, okay, we're giving you automatic workloads so how you can deploy your, your models or how you can just run hundreds of thousands of parallel simulation shops at the same time, right? Because it's easy to do this in a small scale, but with the scaling this up to a large amount, you need to combine the IT actually together with the research engineering part. And this is where we come in place and actually help several of our clients. Is it just like kind of specific or limited to you know, autonomous driving development or it can be used outside? It can be all. So the, the point is we, like two, yeah, two and a half years ago or three years almost when we, we started this this offering. So we, we found ourselves in this disruptive space of, of autonomous driving. And so this is where we started to develop this. And um, we 
we went to this, I would call it large scale analytics, really combining big data with high performance computing. And um, so we started this because this was the most yeah, disruptive market in the moment. But really at the, at the end, um, this is something which is for all like large scale analytics, we can use it for like pharma, for manufacturing, for um, yeah, all kinds of different like use cases where you have large amounts of data. And this actually works pretty well. Yeah. So how long did you did it take for you to build this for this specific use case? Like years? How many years? Yeah, not even a year actually. So this was <laughs> it was an amazing period. So we got the task um, to build this up in our yeah in roughly three and a half months. So from an empty, empty like data center into a productive state. So this was extremely demanding for all teams. So the team did a, an awesome job actually. And um, this was also like possible to work very close with BMW. Like the two of us working together in like a, a two in a box model, really bringing this up from really empty room into a fully productive state. This was really amazing. This really showed what it actually does to work together as a team. To, to partner and like everybody and our own team was so like aroused by everything that like, they were like so pushing so we want to finish this we want to make this now this was an, an awesome like atmosphere inside the team and we did it like three and a half months with christmas break in between actually oh wow that's impressive uh johan thank you so much for for taking time out and talking to us today i wish uh, this event was thank you me. i wish this event was happening in physical so in person so we could have you know met in person but i hopefully will be very yeah, nice awesome yeah. thank you